Ken Stearns, welcome. Yeah, to thank you, studio. Megan. Thanks um, for you, having me. Yeah, you reached out on LinkedIn, yeah. which I look at periodically, and it's like somebody sent you a message. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a message from you saying. It's like a real message. Yeah, coming to town, and I was like, oh, another. there's mostly spam on there. Yeah, it's mostly spam and people trying to outsource work. But this, you're yeah. coming with this calendar here. Yes. And well, tell me a little bit about what this calendar is. So I'm using the I'm using the paper calendar to kind of visualize uh, the cities where I'm going to go, and then by each four day segment in each city, uh, I can have an idea, you know, when the interviews are, when I have a rest day, you know, when I should be working on some of the summaries, some of the the literary stuff I have to do, the writing around the the production. Okay. Yeah. So when you reached out, you said you were part of this thing called the Jar, yep. the podcast. Mm -hmm. And you're going to 111 cities. Yep. So I, I created a concept for a podcast right. uh, that was, you know, hopefully going to kind of be my third act. So I'm ch coming off a career change. I lived in Asia, worked in Asia for 20 years. Okay. Came back to the U.S. in January. I had written a book, uh, kind of a spiritual book called Dear God. And it was letters to God where I was asking questions around life topics. Yesterday, today's, tomorrow's, your, so your past, your future acceptance, compassion, forgiveness, um, love, karma, service, prayer, hope, and faith. Okay. So these 12 topics. And I took the 12 topics, made 444 questions. Cool. Yeah. So I have four, so I run around the country with 444 questions on a card. It's like this. Okay. And I commissioned from a glass artist, I commissioned four jars. So we have giant jars like this. They're, they're, they're this big, yeah. beautiful glass jars. We put these 400 questions in, and then Megan, you interview yourself. Okay. I'm a facilitator. You, I pull so a you pull a question out like that, and I read it for the audience, and then you share what your answer is, what your, what your life experience is related to that life topic, human topics. I mean, acceptance, compassion, forgiveness. These are things we should be talking about. Yeah. Uh, one of the, kind of one of the things that's coming out of it, it's quite interesting. You know, it's a bell curve. Humanity is a bell curve. And most of us are in the middle on, on all the important things in life about how to treat each other, about how to be a person, how to be a human. Really important stuff, but somehow the conversation is driven by fringe uh -huh. on whatever side, whatever polar opposite. Those are the ones shooting missiles over the rest of us, and we're all kind of just going, really? Do we have to play these kind of games? Yeah. And we have so much in common, but we start out a lot of things in life now talking about what we don't have in common and then trying to make that an issue. But it's been a side result of the jar. Yeah. It's more of an observation uh, that, that the work that we're doing in the project is, is important because it is bringing real, the real important topics to the surface and finding out what you think about it. Yeah. No judgment, just real people, real conversation. So I was introducing, so 111, where have you been so far? So I started in Olympia, Washington okay. uh, on April 4th. I was just out there. Yeah, yeah, cool city. Out in Seattle. Had some great interviews. I met oh. some like amazing people. Yeah. And I've just is been doing. Is that where you live? Is that where you originate from? I'm from Chicago originally. Okay. So I lived in Chicago a long time, and then as a kid, and lived uh, as a, an adult, a young adult in LA, and then lived as a maturing adult in Asia. Um, and so I just did for this, you know, all the way up and down the the north. And so now I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm getting up to the close. I'll be top of Maine uh, next week. And then I'll go down. in Olympia, and you've been traveling in a Montana, a van, Utah, in a car, in a, in a, bike, in a, van. a van. I have a van. I drive the van, and it keeps my supplies because I'm a rec I'm field recording. Okay. Everything is done, and every day I'm in a new location recording an interview. Yeah. So um, I need a lot of equipment. I've yeah. got a lot of stuff. So I don't live in the van, but um, I use hotels. And so I've been driving the van and just driving. How many states that is now? I'm not keeping track of the states. I'm in my 32nd city, and I've done about 100 interviews. Oh, how many days? Oh, April. You started in April, yeah, April so May. 32 cities yeah. since April. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Every four days. So what you, you see like in the map still is. In touch, do you feel like your soul is still behind you, or are you are you all I'm, in? A, do you feel like a whole human being still? I'm present. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm living a pretty intentional life. Yeah. Very intentional at the moment, and I'm present. It's very cool. And are most of the people that you're talking to in the middle of that bell curve that you're talking about, or have you have you been talking yeah, I've had to a few on both sides? I've had quite a few that are actually been been on the on the fringe in a way. Yeah. And but somehow are in that middle now. Every the the interesting thing is the strength of humanity is is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I'm just blown away by how strong people are, uh, how cruel humans can be to one another. Mm -hmm. The stuff I've seen, I've seen a lot of trauma, um, physical trauma, sexual trauma, mental trauma, uh, a lot of drug addiction to cope with that. A lot of things that happen to people as children mm -hmm. that impact them all the way, trying to fix that, address that all the way through life. But everybody that's sitting down with us, that's following up on the, the, the conversations are on the right road. They've been on these kind of, you know, if you look at their road, if you look at their map they've been on, it's pretty, some of it's pretty scary. But a lot of normal, I mean, a lot of great normal people, people have had regular childhoods and everything, but a lot of people I've met are now on the right road. So it's really, that's also kind of feels good because I've, yeah. I get to see the destruction of the road they were on and then you see them, you know, I got the map out, the compass, and they're, they're going on the right path, yeah. including the one this morning. It's a great, you know, great inspirational what people so, can overcome. You talked about you spent, this is your third chapter, so you were yeah. in, you lived in Asia, which is a big place. Yep. Where, where in Asia? So I lived in five countries. Okay. I lived in Hong Kong for about 12 years. Okay. That was my first uh, place. That's a place where a lot of companies have home offices. Got it. And so you stay in the home office and support different countries. So you might have a country operation. So that's kind of like your, your regional office. So you're work, we're living and working there. In Hong Kong and okay. traveling around Asia. And then I lived in Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, and India uh, for about another 10 years. 12 years in Hong Kong and 10 in another four countries. Yeah. And what was your reentry? So then you came back to the United States. Yeah, I came back yeah, straight here uh, in January. So kind of left a corporate life then and started and started the jar. Uh, so I spent so about. So you were doing the insurance work in Asia. Yeah. That was what you were yes. doing. You were doing this yeah. insurance work and then you came back here. Yeah. To start this to kind of retire from corporate life. Got it. Wow. So Interesting. So my yep. my exit strategy, you know, was just retire. Okay. From corporate life and uh, and to see where this leads me. Yeah. You know, writer. So I'm really a writer, a speaker. Um, the podcast, the host and creator, and then uh, a lyricist. I've also read a f written a few songs. So do you think about also, do you think about the audience for your, do you, are you thinking about like who's who's your intended audience or who you want yeah, to pay I love attention it. to this? Um, yes and no. I didn't, I'd never, I didn't set out to, cra to I didn't want this to be built for somebody mm -hmm. else. You know, really wanted, I believed, and had an idea that the questions would allow people to tell their story. And I'm not a good, I'm not an interviewer. So I'm not a professional interviewer. So um, I had to kind of come up with some way to do it and, and to be unique. Yeah. And, I th and I thought the questions would allow me that kind of that grace to, to figure out how to be an interviewer and get good at it. Yeah. Uh, and also kind of the odd thing is that it's along that creative process, I'll have 444 people, unique individuals, but I'll put them all through the same set of questions. Yeah. And out of that comes this light, like a spectrum of humanity. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's yeah. really, each interview is about 90 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny, you're showing me your archiving. Yeah. And I was just chatting yesterday and saying, you know, what a tremendous resource we're building. Yeah of all these different people from all different walks of life all across the country, all different ages, all different, and there's no filter on. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're, not, um, we're not curating the guests. Yeah. When we're I was of, introducing you to- We're taking them as they come. Staff, I said, do you, uh, it reminds me a little of Studs Terkel working. Do you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, that takes me back. Yeah. I was a fan of Studs too. Yeah, I used to, yeah. Okay, I'll have to go back and look. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, we're all like uh, the appropriation of everything, right? You know, it's just that whole life stuff. And somehow I'm doing something a little bit different, but not 100% new. Yeah. 
Well, do you want to give us an example of some of the questions that you have sure. here? And then I'm curious about you answering. Oh, me answering my own yeah, questions. Maybe you, maybe I never, you pick yeah. a question and answer it. I did have somebody actually on one day, um, I was interviewing somebody who was a school teacher. And after about the fifth or sixth question, she said, this is really uncomfortable. Mm. I'm always in control. Yeah. And I always know the answer. Yeah. And I always know the question I'm going to ask. And now here I am. I have no idea what question's coming, and I don't yeah. know what the answer is yeah. going to be. So, yeah, so some sample questions. Uh, and again, so these are in a jar, sitting in the jar, and, and people pull them out at random. And so it's an hour and about an hour, because we have some intro and ex exit parts, about an hour of the jar of, yeah. of interacting. So first one is, what does karma mean to you? Okay. And so I can, you know, a, a little bit cheating too because I wrote the questions. Okay. And most of them, I re some of them I remember, not, not all of them exactly. And, and karma for me really is an energy. Uh -huh. um, it's created by thoughts, by actions. You know, everything I believe has some kind of energy, and so uh, for me, karma is an energy, yeah. and it's just a it's a physical form almost uh, of a non-physical thing. Okay. Can we humans actually comprehend fully what space we occupy in the universe? Oof. <laughs> yes. No. No. I mean, I could go on, and you quite, could, a, quite but often you, we. You don't, may be wrong. But no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, okay, there's another universe. Does God have faith in us? In some of the words, we have God in prayer in there, and yeah. these can be interchanged with, um, you know, Creator or, or intelligent life or intelligent design. Blah blah blah. We can different words so people can get comfortable. But does God have faith in us? Um, it's interesting for me, interesting question too, because I wrote a song around faith. It was the first, the first letter I wrote was faith. It was probably based on my mom's tremendous faith, which just kind of confounded me. Uh -huh. um, but actually, kind of thing I've, in the end, it is like prayer for me. Out, out of this comes a prayer question. Was all about actually, you know, we do what we we do what we do. We have our own free will, and faith is really just faith in ourselves in uh -huh. the end and doing what we know we need to do. Does that make sense? I don't know sure. if that can I articulate that um, very is, well. Is there a question that you found comes up over and over in most, like, is there, yeah. is there a question that there like, are, everybody always draws this question or? Um, it's kind of hard to say because I have quite a few questions that I liked and I wrote because there's only 12 topics. Okay. So, so there's a lot of slices. Yeah, yeah, there's some redundancy. Yeah. Yeah. It can feel redundant, but questions can often be quite close and they're good because you answered it this way yeah. and now we'll get a slice of it this way. Yeah. It forces a person to kind of examine another side. A lot of, a lot of black and white questions. Yeah. One's black, one's white, the, the rev mirror image. Um, a lot of sunset questions and sunrise questions still. Like life and light, just the, 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 emo life or the, the emotion, no, the feeling when you oh, see a sunrise. Oh, where see, do you, where's your favorite place for a sunrise? I'm a metaphorical. Metaphor um, yeah. And then how about, how about a range, like some examples of a range of difference? Are there surprises like, wow, people answer this question in really different ways or? The first, the first day and then that first week, I was completely confounded because people answered, they read the question different than I wrote it. Yeah. Intentionally wrote yeah. it. Yeah. So I didn't expect that. Yeah. That one, that one, obviously I should have expected it, right? That's like pretty obvious one. Um, but it just blew me away. And over time, I'm even more surprised because there's more facets. The way people read, the, even the way they articulate the question. Yeah. Or even two people, uh, like I did an interview yesterday with two people and one person read the, the question and another, the next person read it and a different word jumped out to them as being the key word. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of facets to the questions, especially the way I write. Um, you know, there's, there's, hmm. What can you do to help the next person you meet feel the warmth of your open heart? So you have to kind of start putting yourself, and just different people pick up different parts of each question. Yeah. The facets is what a word someone described to me. Yeah. Oh, it has many facets. 
So do you feel, so you're, I, I would feel as a human, right, where we're, we have this community around us, mm -hmm. it, it lends us a certain sort of predictability, safety, and yes. comfort. And you're like chucking that to the wind. Because yes. you're not traveling in your RV to see the sights and still no. containing, so to meet that many people and to make mm -hmm. that many connections, what's the impact of that band for you? It's changing it's, me for sure. Yeah. It's gonna change me. And will change me a lot, I think, on reflection. Because I'm still in the moment. I'm still in the a bit of PTSD, <clears throat> right? I'm still in the whole. You know, I'm still in the middle of the trauma. Yeah. Um, and I'm hearing a lot of you know. So I'm hearing a lot of stories. Yeah. So you know, I've got to use some techniques and manage the emotional part to not be connected to people because I'm a I'm really easily connected with people. Yeah. Um, and and make you know make a strong personal connection, especially to their story or their the the trauma they go through. Um, but it's working out okay. I'm actually pretty surprised. I think in the beginning I was a little bit worried when I started hearing some of the stories I heard. And now that I've gotten, I'm getting used to it. Um, I'm pretty, I'm getting good at it. I yeah. think I'm getting much, much better at it. But it has made me an incredibly, uh, let's say, I give people a lot of grace. Almost everybody I look at now, I just look at, I, I look at people completely differently, yeah. honestly. I know there's no judgment. I used to look at someone, you see their shoes or their clothes or, you know, and you just um, make some kind like, of a, yeah. well, we always kind of make just some goofy fill in the blank, right? Yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah. human nature, yeah. I, I would hope. At least I was hope I'm a normal human. And you just make, you know, your own judgments. Um, and now I just, I'm with, I look at people and I just wonder what the story is. Yeah. It's That's a really it. weird, yeah. it's how, a. How do you, how can you share that? That seems like an important thing. And I was just telling somebody earlier, um, you know, I have a 19-year-old turning 20. Maybe he's 20, turning 21. I should know that. But, um, <laughs> Pressure. And we were talking about road rage. You know, we are yes. talking about driving yes. and how important it is. And I said, you know, I have a mantra because in order to have compassion, you have to have a story. To understand that to person's understand person. Okay, right. Okay. So, so I have a mantra when to, to avoid road rage. My mantra is like they're on the way to the hospital to have a baby. Perfect. Right? Yeah. So it's, so it's like you get caught up That's... in traffic by the Tesla. You get caught up in traffic <laughs> by the truck driver. Whoever it is, they get somebody in the car. They got to get to the hospital. They got to. They're going somewhere in a and hurry. If you hate babies or you don't want breeders, you can say they're on the they're on the way to the animal hospital with the dog. With the cat. Yeah. With yeah. the with the dog or a cat. Yeah. So you tell a story, which immediately allows you to have compassion, and then there's once you have compassion, you can't you can't engage. Yeah, you can't be mad at somebody. Mad at right. somebody. Absolutely, if you have compassion. Yeah. So where, what, where do you go in your building of this? How do you, how do you, how do you transmit that experience to other yeah. people? How do you it's teach what you're, what you're learning? I don't and share know, it with other people? and I don't know yet. So okay. this kind of ties for me. Um, it ties in, it ties into the question: What do you, what am I going to do with this? What's the purpose? Okay. Yeah. Because for me, that's it's a real simple. It comes into that into that stream, into that lane, of what do we, what am I going to do with this? What's the point? Yeah. And I'm on I'm on that path. I'm on, I'm doing what I'm doing. And there's somebody somebody said the other day, the path will rise to meet you. Uh -huh. It's kind of an Irish. I guess it's an old Irish saying. Oh yeah. May the roads may the road rise up to meet you. Yeah. Yes, that's it. And and, and the so. Wind be at your back. And the wind be at my back. So I got the wind at my back right now. And I'm running on the road, and it's great. And you know, the path is there, and I'm kind of just riding the path right now. Cool. And you know, I've got another how many cities left? Another 70 cities left, something like that. 70, 80 cities, and you know, another 300 people. So you're gonna go from here up to Maine, and then and then down, down the coast. Follow the sun. Follow the sun down the coast. And then a little bit of squiggly to hit some of the states on the coast, right? So you're gonna feel the. Have you felt already? The cultural differences. Already the cultural difference. The Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Neat. Yeah. Coming into the Midwest was different. Yeah. So coming really out of that that West. Yeah. You know, big sky country, mountain loggers, you know, cattle ranchers. Nobody. I drive for like two hours on the road and not see a human. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. And then get to the Midwest, different people, my people. I'm a Midwesterner. Uh, and then I'm here on the East Coast. Yeah. Northeast. Yeah. And and, Heady people. and 
Yeah, and in, in, their, in their heads. And New Englanders. New Englanders. And New Englanders. So yeah. this is going to be, and look, every state's different, right? Yeah. And even town to town. I mean, I learned that about Asia. Yeah. You know, there's no such thing as Asia. Yeah. I mean, even Vietnam has got 10 cultures inside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one, one country's got a lot, of, a lot going on. Yeah. So even every state's going to have quite a bit. But, but generally. Are you going to go through New York? I mean, oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. How can you like? Do you have to? Do you get to treat each borough as a separate city? Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> like I don't know where I'm going to go. I have some. Um, I have some friends, some grade school friends that are there okay. in in the city. Okay. Uh, and so I think I'm going to connect through them. Which borough are they in? Manhattan. In Manhattan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the city. He's a, I've got a brain surgeon buddy, super smart kid from you know back in the day. Yeah. And uh, he's got some connections, and I'm oh. going to kind of follow that. So I've been doing a bit of that. I just stayed with a, f a friend from Asia uh, in his place in New York in uh, Cooperstown. Oh, okay. Yep. So I was in Cooperstown and stayed with a friend, and that was great. And I got to hang out with the friends at night, and then, you know, during the day I was doing during my thing. Day, yeah. Doing and my how thing. Are people, how are you finding people besides, is it Moon? We do a lot of Facebook. Okay. Um, so a couple, th I kind of laugh. I, you know, I either I pick them up in bars. Yep. So I pick people up in bars and I have my question of the day and we, you know, you might be sitting there having dinner and, you know, I'll just kind of interrupt and say question of the day and, you know, we have a chit chat and sometimes people like this fascinating and I can, you know, and next thing I know I'm at your house for yeah. dinner the yeah. next night yeah. doing an interview. Yeah. It's really wild. Yeah. Open, you know, an open heart, right? You know, if you're just an open person yeah. and you got kind of that, you know, you're putting out that right vibration. Yeah. Um, it happens. It's happening to me right now, and it's different. It's definitely something unusual. <laughs> just I just this morning I was just talking to the fireman, and uh, yeah, so I was in Starbucks. So I go into Starbucks, going to grab a coffee. Whole load of guy, you know, whole load of just studly looking fire dudes are behind me, okay. and they're standing there. And you know, I turn around and pull out, and we're waiting, guys. Question of the day, and um, the one guy had a faith question. He came up to me. He said. We talk about stuff around the kitchen table every night. And he's like, this question, he goes, the stuff we see in the day, what we see every day, uh, and he's like, we are challenged. You know, just humanity. Yeah. Um, just the EMT interviews I've had are. So oof. is that, so you came to, to us here today, so to, right today, if you're watching yeah. this, it is, um, when, it's about one, yeah, Thursday, Thursday about September one, 1st. At yeah, 1 30 ish. Yeah, 1 30. And you came from another interview this morning. Yeah. And that was, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, a lady uh, a bit, out, bit outside of town, actually, another next town over. Okay. And um, she found us on Facebook. Yeah. And she uh, reached out. And so we had a discussion and agreed to the time and everything and met her at her place. So drive out there and set up and, whew, wow. Uh, abused from by her father sexually from a young age of four remembers everything um, the mom's situation not pretty mom was the boss of the house they were poor things got you know quite ugly obviously it's not it's not a very pretty situation and eventually got out of the house um, it's kind of a storied background it's quite a complicated story so t um, but, but ultimately yeah ultimately reconciled with the father oh yeah a long story but the father came came around and came out as who he was to his church to his to his and but she never knew which is the interesting part she didn't know that but he came clean and ultimately um when he died she's now actually she found out a lot of this as he was before he passed away mm -hmm. um and they had a, they started to have a relationship a wreck she's like i was about to have a relationship with this person, yeah. my father, and um, and was in you know loved him. Still, his her. I mean, it's you know it's hard, complicated stuff. It's her father. She loved him. Yeah. She wanted that to be right. Yeah. And uh, and then he had a massive heart attack and died. Yeah. Um, so yeah. This I mean, you you could tell that, but it sounds to me I'm, I can see the image of the jar. Yes. Your, lo your, your logo, which is up yeah, here we're behind us. Yeah, we're sitting here with the jar. And it's almost like people are putting their stories into this jar. And you're yes. carrying them around. It's, you know, yes. more than this. Cause, and it, even when you reached out, I was like, oh, there's something. You know, he's there's this. he wants to draw out this story. So it it's is interesting the that people are contacting you and to tell you these things. Vulnerably. Yeah. 
she, I mean, she, there was nothing that was off the table. I mean, she shared everything from her personal, a lot, and there's, it's a complex story. It's long and winding and complex. Yeah. But the, and even in the end, I mean, interesting, I'm meeting a lot of unique people. Um, she's an empath. Yeah. So she's, she speaks to people on both sides of the spectrum, you know, yeah. people here today and people who have gone. And she said, I now have a stronger relationship with my dad. Yeah. After. He's yeah. come to her a few times and they've yeah. had conversations. Yeah. Um, do you have a team? You have a team supporting Just you. A team you behind have, me, yeah. right? So a team uh, remote, yeah. uh, through keeping keeping you safe and kind of keeping me on the right on the and helping with set up the interviews. Yeah. So there's two things I need help on. One is the, is the details of the people, yeah. because that's quite a bit of work to dialogue and agree a location. Yeah answer people's questions because it's, you know, you, you wouldn't normally just jump in a, and sit down with some strange guy with a bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, so we have, I have my, ironically, it's my daughter. Yeah. I say ironically, but a fun story, but she's become my, my really number one is help, help support person yeah. uh, on that. And then um, I have a person, technical person on the quality of the podcast. Great. So the audio, because yeah. it's field recording. Yeah. So they can And I know pretty little about field recording. So you can upload, share those. They I upload it. And where do people yep. watch it? They can so we're watch on, it, listen to it. Yeah, you can see us. You can find us on iTunes. Yep. That's our most popular place that people find us. Uh, we're on Spotify. And it's either called The Jar or The Jar Podcast. Yep. Uh, we also have some, if you want to get an idea really like a, a quick up, um, let's say up to speed on what we're doing, yep. find us on YouTube. We did about 12 video series like a like what a netflix show would look like cool neat so if we were to do if you were to if netflix is listening or or itunes yeah. or or anybody else uh hulu you want some original series yeah. you go find our our youtube our and that is exactly what we're doing yeah it's it's, it's a yeah. it's me doing an interview maybe about six minutes of a few interviews yeah. and then it's about six minutes of the team or me talking yeah and it's me I mean, in the it's van. So funded. I mean, so yeah. you're not, you're not, you don't have a Netflix or, a, or an iTunes or a Apple behind you, right? Yeah, no. You're doing this. Self-funded right now. Yeah. Um, you know, this is my. It's like a business. If I was to come back and open up, you know, um, I don't know, an ice cream store or something, I'd spend a lot of money getting resources put together and yeah. invest that money. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's what I'm doing here. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we're gonna have you interview um one of our field producers here we brought okay. somebody to so you can, we found a victim you found, you found, hopefully he's not a victim he's, <laughs> he's very open-hearted and travis <laughs> is gonna um sit down and talk with you so folks oh, that's great. listen introduce you introduce what you're doing yeah and then hopefully folks could follow up and, um, and find the find the find show the show with yeah. travis and I did see, I mean, I saw the whole list of shows that you have right now yeah. ready, which is kind of amazing. Um, Quite a few still to, to produce, to yeah. put to uh, to put live. Yeah. So that's, so um, I think we'll, is there anything more that you feel like you want to make sure folks know about what you're doing, you know, where I, you are? and? You know. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I think it's, you know, we're looking for guests. You know, we're always the, the looking for guests is there all the time. Um, so I'm here in, I'll be in Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, yep. and then dropping down to Massachusetts, yep. uh, Delaware, down in the New York area, um, Philly, yep. Philly, New York, and then uh, down to Carolinas, Tennessee, Kentucky. Yep. Uh, so if you're in that path, uh, go find us on Facebook. It's a great place to find us. Cool, great. And, and you can chat there with, uh, with my daughter, the producer. And, and get us get you on the show. Cool. Well, this is a neat. This is a really neat project. Thank you. It's a it's a gift to yourself. It is a gift to myself. And a gift to the people that yeah. you meet with, because um, yeah, the right. ability for people to tell their stories and be heard is really important. So, um, it, it thanks is. for coming in and doing this. Thank so you, Megan. Thanks for yeah. Thanks and, so much. Yeah. Thanks for watching. And um, again, if you want to find out more, you can look up uh, the jar live um, and yeah. learn about Ken's project and maybe sign up to be interviewed. Yeah, or refer a guest to is great. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks again. Take care.